Hi, my name is Jace Elliott. I'm a graduate research assistant at the Auburn University Deer Lab. And one of the projects that I'm currently working on is reducing the misclassification error in whitetail deer camera surveys. Uh, so a lot of people think the camera surveys are more you know, government agency work, uh, but in reality, uh, they're oftentimes run by you know, property managers or, or even you know, landowners and generally do inform some pretty important management decisions on those properties. We're also seeing that you know, these, these camera surveys that are run uh, by individuals may not always be accurate and are subject to misclassification error. Basically, this is where you're trying to put a deer in a category uh, from a picture. You're either calling it a buck, a doe, or a fawn in order to, uh, you know, get a sense of the, the population dynamics. Now, when someone mistakenly calls a fawn a doe or a doe a fawn, it's going to misrepresent the fawn crop, for instance, uh, which, which may have implications with management decisions, uh, and you can, you can see how this would be an issue. So what I'm seeing with uh, misclassifications for bucks is uh, obviously branch antlered bucks are gonna be the easiest uh, group to classify. Uh, now that being said, you know, yearlings like spikes, especially in Alabama, uh, are likely to have uh, pretty small antlers and uh, they may be mistaken for fawns when in reality they're year and a half year old deer. Uh, now this would artificially inflate the, the fawn crop estimate uh, if yearlings are, are con considered fawns. So a lot of times before people uh, conduct camera surveys, they may feel like the uh, buck to doe ratio is uh, you know, different than reality. Uh, you oftentimes hear about people referring to seven to one or, or 10 to one uh, doe to buck ratios. In reality, this, this is uh, pretty much impossible and you're rarely gonna find a situation where there's more than a three or four to one uh, ratio. Now, the reason people feel this way is they're sitting in the deer stand and, and all they're seeing is does. Now, one reason that people are likely to see more does than bucks in the stand comes down to the physiology of the deer. So does are gonna be smaller in body size, uh, meaning they have to consume resources on a faster pace and more regularly than larger bodied bucks. This rule holds true for most species. Basically, the nutritional requirements of a doe are more urgent in a shorter time span and, and you're more likely to, to see them feeding in the daytime when they're vulnerable. You know, additionally, uh, people tend to hang their stands in you know, food plots or open hardwoods. And these are areas that maybe you shouldn't expect to see a deer or a, a mature buck rather uh, in the daytime. When you're hunting for to see deer numbers, you're probably not hunting to see big bucks. As a final note, we're in the process of creating basically a species specific guide that will be available for people to look at, be able to differentiate does and fawns, fawns from spikes, that sort of thing in order to assist uh, with camera surveys and improve their accuracy. If you're interested in learning more about these topics or some other ones that I haven't covered, uh, you can check out them at the Auburn Deer Lab website.